Recently, we've been spending quite a bit of time talking about you know, web programming and the technologies that come with it. And today is no exception, because today we're going to be talking about Base64. Now, again, this seems to be a fairly you know, new and trendy thing. And as it turns out, well, there is a good reason for it, because, well, it is a very interesting way of representing information. So yeah, with that in mind, let us jump into today's Random Wednesday episode. Hello and welcome back to another Random Wednesday episode. Now, the term B64 is actually a very interesting term because, well, if you know its context, it actually tells you quite a bit about how it works. Here's the deal. When we talk about, say, a binary number, we also call it a base2 number. And the reason for that is because, well, every character only has two possible values. The normal digits that we are very used to, right, also known as decimal values, well, those are called base 10 because they run from 0 to 9, giving us 10 possible different values. Similarly, a hexadecimal digit would be base 16 because, again, it goes from 0 up to F, giving you 16 possibilities. So what this means is base 64 as a term should make sense to you now. That is, we're representing information in a way that every character can take on one of 64 different possible values. So of course, the next question you may have is why exactly do we want to do this? And well, as it turns out, there is a very interesting application, and that is to represent any form of binary information in plain text. Now, this may sound rather counterintuitive because, well, it's working just nice as binary, why would we want to actually convert it to plain text? And for the most part, you are right. If it's not something that is strictly necessary, it's not really what we would want to do. But today, we'll look at a few situations in which its use can actually be helpful. So let's jump right in first and foremost to our web programming you know, application, and that is in what is known as a data URL. Of course, you know what a URL is, it points you to some resource hosted on some machine. However, a different way of doing it will be to have the file right there within the entire URL itself. In fact, in this case, this is a very simple picture represented as a data URL. What this means is everything you see here represents the image itself, not a locator of the image on disk, but the actual contents of the image itself is all here within that string. The contents of that string is base64. If you had to look in the data part, you'll realize that only, well, a certain set of characters are actually present. You'll notice that it is missing most types of punctuation, for example. And yeah, you'll notice most of it seem to be numbers and letters, both in upper and lower case. And that is base64, right? It has that particular look. So yeah, you know, when you get used to it, you'll be able to recognize it easily. Of course, the question remains, you know, why would we want to actually do this? And to understand that, we have to understand that, you know, web pages actually work in a pretty interesting way. Everything you embed on a page, be it an image, be it a script, those actually require a separate request to the server to fetch that particular file. What that means is if you have an image that is you know, just embedded normally with a URL pointing to that file on disk, loading that site requires two connections to the server. One to fetch the page. As the page is loading, your browser realizes it needs to fetch that file as well. So it goes ahead and performs the other request. If you have a complex web page, you'll find that all these requests add up and it makes loading the page very slow. So instead of linking to a resource that is held externally, we can simply, well, squish that entire image into that page itself. And what that means is even though, well, that page now becomes larger, it can be fulfilled in one request, and that reduces some overheads. Of course, in order to embed an image into your HTML page, you are going to have to express that image as text. And that is where, well, base64 encoding actually comes into the picture. Of course, now that we understand this, we can see that there is quite a bit of potential to it because anything that works with text can now be modified to work with any kind of data, you know, be it image, be it sound, whatever, because now that binary information can be expressed as a string of text. Here's another example. 
Web pages have this thing known as local storage, which allows you to, you know, store a little bit of information, well, text information to be exact, and that stays on a user's computer. So this is different from cookies. This is a little pool of storage that every website has, though I'm guessing most websites don't actually use it. Anyway, that's besides the point. The key thing here is that local storage is a text storage mechanism. So what if you have, say, a little drawing application where you want your user to save their work, their image? Now, clearly the correct way is to get them to save it to a file. However, if you want to actually make use of local storage anyway for whatever reason, at first glance you're kind of stuck because you can't put a picture there. However, if you were to take your image and convert it to a base 64 representation, it has essentially become text. So we can simply shove that along to your local storage. And indeed, in this little example, it works. We have a little drawing canvas here. You draw on it, you click save, and well, basically off it goes to local storage. I can close my browser, reopen it. As long as I'm back on this page, that image will come out. Now, I have to emphasize that this is a quick and dirty solution. It's not something you are supposed to do because, well, local storage is pretty small. So the whole point of this exercise is just to demonstrate the usefulness of Base64 representation to you. So yeah, that's basically the idea in a nutshell. Now, clearly, even though this method can be pretty useful, there are also certain glaring drawbacks. The most you know, prominent of which is the fact that your file size will increase. You see, the reason for this is because, well, technically every Base64 character is wasting two bits. In your HTML file, every character is actually one byte, eight bits. And that remains the case even when you go down to your base64 string. Every character in your base64 string takes up eight bits on disk. However, each one of these characters can technically only represent six bits worth of information. So what this means is essentially, well, you're wasting two bits per character in your base64 string. And that is why you would have to expect basically an inflation in file size when you express any binary data in base64. You are always going to see that increase in size. So what that means is, well, this is a factor you're going to have to weigh up when deciding whether or not to use base64. So yeah, with that said, I think base64 is a very creative and interesting way of representing information that can make things very convenient for you in one sense though you do need to know when is the right time to use it and when's perhaps not the best time to do so. That's basically all the risks for this Random Wednesday episode. I hope you've gained some insight today, but until next time, you're watching 0612 TV with nerdfirst.net. Thank you very much for watching. If you like my work and are feeling generous, you can shoot me a one-time donation on PayPal or sign up for a recurring one on Patreon. Of course, you can simply like, comment, and subscribe. You know the deal. For more videos, links to my channel and a related playlist are on screen. Thank you for your support.